Welcome back to a beautiful sunlit Gillette Stadium. Things are sunny for the 7-2 New England Patriots for now. I'm Mike Petralia, joined as always by Patriots expert columnist for WEEI.com, Christopher Price. Chris, 7-2, considering all of the injuries the Patriots have been through, this bye week is not only well-timed, but well-deserved. It really is. You know, you look at the schedule, and ideally you want your bye week to fall at the midway point of the season, get a chance to heal up a little bit, look back, look forward, kind of get a good assessment of where you are as a team and what you need to do going forward. But, yeah, with the injuries this team has suffered over the last few weeks, going all the way back to the Mayo one in September, going forward with, um, or, I'm sorry, the Wilfork one in right. September, then Mayo, then Tommy Kelly. Uh, it, it's, been a re- it's been a really difficult run for this team, and I think that these next two weeks are going to give the guys like Aqib Tlaib, Steve Gregory, a chance to heal up going forward because they face a very difficult stretch once they come out of that bye. Word is that Steve Gregory has a broken thumb. He's going to get fitted for a cast. Do you think he'll be able to play with the cast when the Patriots resume in a couple of weeks against Carolina? I think right now the situation is they would love to have him back, obviously, sooner rather than later again because they do have a very difficult stretch coming up against some elite offenses. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he missed the Carolina game. You're looking at a situation where you have the one week, you have the two weeks, and then you can come back. And with a defensive back, you can wrap the hand. There are things you can do. It's not like a, where it's not like a ball control situation. It's not like he's a running back or a wide receiver. So you can get him back sooner rather than later. There are things you could do to get him back to the field quickly. I know you asked Bill Belichick this this uh, during the bye week uh, news conference that he had here at Gillette. Uh, what kind of impact do you think the rest will have, Bill, on um, on his players? Are the rookies going into their first bye week in the NFL any different from veterans? What did he tell you? I think the important thing to remember is it's important to unplug. At some point in the season, and that's what the bye week is designed to do, not only heal up physically, but kind of get right mentally, kind of get a good assessment of where you are as a football player and where you are as a football team after the first eight or nine weeks of the season get away for a little bit you know kind of take your mind off football I know a lot of these guys you know they've talked about it before a lot of these guys are going to go back to their alma maters watch a little college football watch a little high school football spend some time with a family come back rested recharged for the second half of the season we all know here at Gillette Stadium that Bill Belichick is the professor of football emeritus if you will and he certainly loves bringing teaching philosophies and and analogies uh, into his message to players I found it very interesting that once again he, said, he brought one into the, the mix this week saying, you know, for once it's nice not to have to prepare for a final exam type of um, situation that these NFL players, our players, go through every single week. There is that aspect of getting away from football as well. It is, too, and it's really important because it's a long season. We kind of take it for granted a little bit, but, you know, you, you talk about how important it is to get away and, again, to recharge and to kind of get refreshed because so much of the important football, the really important football, is after the bye week, is in November and December. Look, you only play 16 of these games, so all the games are important, but the really important football comes at this time of the year. You know, you start to ramp up, and again, that bye is going to give these guys an opportunity to get away from the game, to get mentally and physically refreshed for the second half of the season. Another parting message for his players and for the media as well was, we've played nine games, we've won seven, Seven wins won't win you a thing in the NFL. Love that message. Exactly, too. You know, you have to be satisfied with where you are. You can take some satisfaction out of where you are after going 7-2 and two and exceeding a lot of the expectations to this point in the season. But that's not going to get you into the postseason. That's not going to get you where you want to be when the playoffs start. This team has done very well to set themselves up for a for, for, for that post-Thanksgiving run, again, those, those last six games of the year are going to be more important than the first six games of the year. But I think in the end, you want to put yourself in position to be in position, for yeah, lack of a better term. Right. And I think the Patriots have done that. Give me a couple of areas, Chris, where this team needs to self-scout, which is one thing NFL teams do during the bye week. A couple of areas they need to self-scout, admit, uh, you know, uh, take a look at, close look at, and then come out and improve in the second half of the season. I think the biggest thing that jumps out to me is run defense, and I know they've added some new faces there, obviously with the loss of Wilfork, with the loss of Mayo, with the loss of Tommy Kelly. I think you need to take a step back and you need to assess where you are as a run defense and what areas you can do to where you can improve, really, across the board. Um, I like the addition of Sopalaga. I thought he brought a lot to the field in his first game this past week against the Steelers. But you can look at some more personnel changes. You can look at some more packages you can run out there. Maybe it's a more a more expanded role for someone like a Brandon Spikes on running down. Maybe it's more of an expanded role for, for Dane Fletcher when it comes to working as a coverage linebacker. But specifically, I would look at run defense and how you can improve that going forward. Again, a lot of those problems 
are as a result of the injuries they've had, but you can mix and match and you can get by, you know, over the second half of the season, I think, with the guys that they have in that locker room. Off the beaten path a little bit, Chris. Uh, I had a chance to ask Belichick to wrap up the, the news conference about the Richie Incognito uh, situation down in Miami. And I simply asked Bill how much he appreciates having leadership in his locker room that he really doesn't seemingly ever have to worry about uh, problems like this, certainly not on, on a scale like this. Your impression of the way leadership is handled in the Patriots locker room, especially going into the bye? I think it's fascinating, too, because you can trace back over the last 10 or so years the evolution of leadership on this team, and usually it's been pretty good. They've had a few tipping points. They've been close to tipping points, right. particularly in 2009. Every team does. Exactly, yeah, and every team goes through that, and every locker room goes through that. But they were able to kind of tighten things up in 2010. They were able to bring in veterans like Algie Crump for that offseason. Right. They brought back Vince Wilfork, who was a tremendous part of that leadership group. I think it's important to maintain an open dialogue between the captains and the coaches. I think a lot of what went on in Miami is incumbent upon the coaches. It's incumbent upon the assistant coaches, the position coaches, right. to sniff that kind of stuff out and figure out what's happening before it becomes a problem. And I think here in New England, at least history tells us that some stuff has happened. You know, and I'll put I'll put my finger quotes up here. Hazing. You know, I think there have been some situations where guys have felt uncomfortable, but I think in every situation, the leadership, the assistant coaches, the head coaches, they've moved quickly to take care of that problem. And it is one big reason, Chris, that leadership you mentioned, uh, why they've been able to overcome the numerous injuries that would really uh, tear apart lesser teams. They are 7-2 and two, heading into the bye week. They will take on the Carolina Panthers on the road November 18th. It'll be a Monday night football game. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they start. The Carolina Panthers are no joke this year, so uh, the Patriots have a little bit of extra time to prepare for Cam Newton and company. He's Christopher Price. I'm Mike Petralia. Enjoy the bye week. WEEI.com.